Welcome back to this last episode of Around the World in a Bowl of Soup with Chef Ricky. In this last episode, at least for this year anyway, National Award winner Chef Chef Ricky shares with us a soup that he has learned from his grandmother's kitchen. We hope you have been inspired to try some of this great and healthy home cooking yourselves. And don't forget to check back with us to see what is cooking in Spokane Public Library. Hit like and subscribe. Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Well, for this final episode of our Around the World in a Bowl of Soup series, I'm excited to bring you a little bit of my own heritage. This is a recipe my grandma used to make, and it is of Portuguese heritage. And so I'm taking it from her and uh, using all the little tricks and secrets that she used to do to make this for you all. I hope you enjoy it. It is Portuguese bean soup. One of the, the things that makes this Portuguese is the sausage. This is linguiça. Linguiça is a Portuguese sausage that's flavored with garlic and red wine. It is pork based. Um, and this is a brand that I actually get shipped in from the East Coast because I love it, it's just very, very traditional. But you can find this in the supermarket, the grocery stores, lots of local meat companies even make a brand of linguiça, uh, and they're all, all wonderful. So I'm gonna start by chopping up uh, an onion, and I use one medium to large onion. If you want a little bit more oomph in there, uh, use a white onion, otherwise you can use a yellow or a red onion in there, it's fine, a little bit more mild, but the white onion has a little bit of a bite to it, which I like. Definitely has that flavor of onion, and I think it goes really nice with the Portuguese sausage and all the spices that are in here. The spices that we're gonna use, I have already uh, dished out on that plate. We have some bay leaves, which are very, very traditional. Two to three bay leaves for this recipe, but bay leaves are a very traditional Portuguese spice. There is some allspice, there is about a teaspoon of allspice, a tablespoon of cinnamon, and a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of cumin. Cumin is a very traditional uh, Portuguese seasoning and spice as well, as well as cinnamon. So Portugal was, uh, in the early times, Portugal is the one that went and did a lot of the spice trade. Um, they went through India and Africa. So a lot of our seasonings in Portuguese cuisine come from those other continents of Asia. And now, our pot is uh, on the heat here, getting warm. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of some bacon, bacon fat, bacon grease. Save it anytime you cook bacon. Um, make sure you save that. It is liquid gold. And every time my grandma would make this recipe, she would cook off a couple pieces of bacon, throw that in there too. But the main star of the show is again that Portuguese sausage. So if I have some bacon grease lying around, I'm going to use that. Otherwise, I'll do like my grandma did and uh, incorporate a few pieces of bacon in there for the flavor. But now we're going to add our white onions to that bacon grease. Get those to sweat a little bit. Now I'm going to chop up a few cloves of garlic. And I also want to talk about the beans we're going to use for this bean soup. This Today I'm using uh, pinto beans. And these I soaked overnight in some water. You always want to make sure that the water covers the beans up at least an inch. Now if you're using this or doing this day of and you forgot to soak your beans overnight, a little trick is that you can actually just pour hot or boiling water on them, let them sit out for a couple hours, you'll end up with a very similar feel to the product. So um, traditionally, pink beans would have been used in this recipe, but pink beans are not the easiest to find. They're out there, but pinto beans are perfectly fine. Um, I mean, you could use any bean. The, I've made this before with those bags of like 13 bean or bean soup mix. Anything is great. Um, and it's really going to keep the same flavors of just what we're seasoning, which is those onions and that linguiça. So I'm going to chop up my garlic. It doesn't have to be too, too fine because, again, these are going to be on the stove for a couple hours. So all those flavors are really going to cook down and marry together. 
The onions are definitely sweating now. And to that I'm going to add my garlic. And just stir that around for a couple minutes or so. Now let's cut up our Portuguese sausage linguiça. If you can't find the linguiça or maybe you don't have it, I mean, use whatever, like traditional, um, traditional bean soup uses a ham hock. Again, it's just like this rich pork, right? So you can use kielbasa, you can use Italian sausage would be delicious in here. I mean, even hot link, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever you have is great. If you don't have any meat or if you want to make it vegetarian, that's fine too. I would maybe just boost up those spices a little bit. Um, you could add, you know, carrots and celery with that onion, a little mirepoix or some um, bell pepper. That would be great too. So I'm just gonna cut these into like half moons. It's gonna break down in the cooking. This sausage that I order away for is very traditional. Um, a lot of the ones made locally or even though the brand I grew up with, which is Silva, and that you can find in and around town too. Um, it's a little bit more dense, but this brand, it's like a little bit looser. So the meat kind of breaks down a little bit more, which is more traditional to how it's made in Portugal. Now we're gonna add the linguiça, the chopped up linguiça, to our onions and garlic that have been cooking down in that bacon grease. We're going to stir that up. You'll quickly start to see the linguiça start rendering off some of the natural fat that comes from the pork. We're going to toast up our spices in there while that linguiça is rendering. So any of that fat will help to toast the spices up as well before we add all of our liquid. This adds another layer of flavor. All right, now we're gonna add some good quality canned tomatoes. Now we're gonna add our soaked, cleaned pinto beans to the pot. And then we're gonna cover with water about an inch up from the beans. That looks about right to me. Beans are about an inch down. So we're gonna do that. And at this point, I'm gonna add a heavy pinch of salt and some black pepper. And I'm adding quite a bit because, you know, we have a lot of ingredients in here. But if you don't like as much pepper, feel free to omit it or not quite add, add as much. Um, another pinch of salt in there. And we're going to keep an eye on this. The longer, the better, in my opinion. Um, it can go two, three, four hours on low on your pot. You want to keep adding a little bit of water as you go. Now that I'm stirring it, I see that it's not quite an inch below, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. And you want to cover this up, let it cook. The longer, the better. And we'll see you back when this is ready to eat. All right, well, we have uh, cooked our soup for about three hours, and this is what you get. This nice, rich, hearty bean stew with those pieces of linguiça in there. I really do think you're going to love this. I'm going to serve it with what's traditional, this uh, crusty bread roll called a popsic, but it is like a bolillo, which you can get in the Hispanic markets. And uh, this just helps to soak up all that beautiful bean broth and juice, and it's delicious. Thank you for tuning into our series, Around the World in a Bowl of Soup, and we hope to see you again really soon.